terminal illness or chronic suffering does not discriminate, nor does it limit itself to age, gender, or race. It can strike any of us without warning and sometimes without mercy. Physical weakness and relentless agony can make even the strongest faith waver. In those times when illness, sadness, and loneliness seem to cast shadows over hope, there is a light, a vision of salvation, an image of mercy, an oasis of humanity, the compassionate face of Christ seen in a group of consecrated religious women known as the Servants of Mary, Ministers to the Sick. Their day begins when most people finish work. As it was in the beginning, as now, and it shall be world without end. Amen. Tonight, a volunteer from a local church in Kansas City arrives to pick up Sister Rosanna from the Provincial House of the Sisters Servants of Mary in Kansas City, Kansas. The pair will drive more than a half hour east, back across the Missouri River to Lee's Summit, Missouri. There, Sister Rosanna will meet Mary and John Culler, the parents of Mark Culler. So what do you want to do? You want to do some um, range of motion or something? Sister Rosanna has come to do what they cannot. Spend the nighttime hours awake, taking care of Mark, ministering to him, reaching out to love and attend to a man who needs constant nursing care and vigilance. For Sister Rosanna, this is her labor of love. To see Christ in the sick, that's, it's something really beautiful. It's like you're there and you see them suffering, but it's, you see Christ in them, that's suffering. And then it gives you even more of a desire to help that person because you see him in them. The sisters' mission is reflected in their silent, tender touch as they hold a crippled hand, wipe a tearful face, or whisper prayers of mercy. In the end, their identity and mission is a simple one, to be living witnesses of Jesus Christ and to continue his work of salvation as they show his love and mercy to the sick and dying. Doctors first diagnosed Mark Culler with muscular dystrophy when he was eight years old. He's now 47. One year ago, he fell ill and has never fully recovered. His parents did all they could to keep up with his care. We worked in our shifts. Um, I went to bed 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the evening, <laughs> still daylight out, and uh, slept until midnight. And then my husband came in, and uh, I was up until six then, and we just would alternate like that, trying to take it. You know, we were going around so tired. The colors first heard about the sisters, servants of Mary, in a newspaper article. A friend from church urged them to contact the sisters for help. For the colors, the burdens of the world had come tumbling down nearly suffocating them in an ocean of despair and fear. Not only was Mary Culler wrestling with the pain of watching her only son suffer, but she was also recovering from gallbladder surgery, and the doctors had just diagnosed her husband with cancer. You just feel so inadequate. I think, can I do this, you know? But um, you can. You do what you have to do when there's love. And you just do what you have to. Our good friend uh, went in and picked up the Mother Superior and uh, Sister Rosanna brought them out. They came so they could meet and talk with Mark a little bit, ask a few questions and just visited with him. And then they said, uh, we were just so shocked. She turned and she said, 
Sister Rosanna will be here tomorrow night. <laughs> we said, what? <laughs> we didn't think it would be that, you know, that quick. We were just in disbelief, you know, at first that people were doing this. And it, it's just uh, overpowering almost to think how much we appreciate that. These visits are nothing new for the Sisters Servants of Mary. The roots of this congregation date back more than 150 years to Madrid, Spain. Their foundress, Saint Maria Soledad, born with various physical frailties herself, had a deep abiding love for Christ and a burning desire to help the poor. Though Soledad's stature was small, her love for Christ, hidden in the presence of the sick and dying, was larger than life itself. And just as Mary stood at the foot of the cross of her dying son, so the servants of Mary are like Our Lady and keep watch by that cross of the sickbed of those who suffer. St. Maria Soledad gave herself to the patients, no matter who he was, rich or poor, male or female. She gave herself night and day, and she taught her daughters this. I see Mother Soledad in everything. I love Mother Soledad so much. She's our foundress, and her spirit is within us. We're her daughters. And I think Mother Soledad is a beautiful model for us. She was so self-giving, so loving. She was so little and so strong. She was so humble, and for us, she, she's our model. It's a servant of Mary. We all want to be like her. Today, the Servants of Mary remain a congregation dedicated to serving the sick and dying in their own homes. When families care for a sick loved one at home, rather than using a nursing home, it can be a difficult, draining, expensive full-time job. These sisters offer relief, and they offer it without asking anything in return, including financial compensation. Although the congregation originated in Spain, today it is rich with a diversity of culture, with sisters from places like Vietnam, the Dominican Republic, and Africa. Fluent in both English and Spanish, the sisters now have missions scattered throughout the world, including ministries in Mexico, South America, Africa, the Philippines, and Europe. But that charism, or spirit, of the servants of Mary is a gift from the Holy Spirit that transcends any and all barriers of language and distance. I, Sister Rosanna Gonzalez. I, Sister Mary Cruz Garcia. Grateful to our Lord for having The reality of Christ's love service. is what unites and, and supports the sisters in their vocation. The sisters, hands, consecrated to God freely and without reservation, are conformed to Christ in his celibacy, poverty, and obedience, thus allowing him to work in and through them. The most important is that the Spirit has brought us all here to be a servant of Mary. But there has to be that love and that respect for each one for what is important for them. At a young age, Jessica Partida recognized a force drawing her closer to religious life. While she was still in high school, she started considering her future as a sister. Jessica's grandmother recognized her attraction to a life consecrated to God and was taking her to speak with a priest when they got lost. Instead, they ran across the Formation Center for the Sisters Servants of Mary in Oxnard, California, about an hour north of Los Angeles. That was what Jessica considers God's will at work. It was her first encounter with the sisters. 
I thought it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. It was the sister in all white, and she was a nursing sister. She started telling me about they were religious sisters and missionary work. They had missions in Africa and the Philippines, and they nursed the sick in their own homes free of charge. Jessica chose to spend the summer before her junior year of high school in California so she could be near the sisters. I was going to enter a new way of life, a spiritual life. I was going to be like newborn, like a child again. You know, I'm going to be a child, I'm going to be a three-year-old, I'm going to be a six-year-old, and I'm going to, you know, learn my, my spiritual grammar. <laughs> so many people out there don't know that there's a God that really loves them, you know. It's just God being in, um, united in Him, you know, not worrying about so much of all the vanities going around. How many are there? Seven. seven. <laughs> and seven means perfect, right? Her sister Patricia Ortega began questioning her future as she made her way through nursing school. She expected to be married and have a family when she realized that vocation was not a part of God's plan for her life. There's a reason. It's not only the way we feel or how we're feeling, but there's something greater than that, beyond what we feel or beyond. There's something much greater to, to strive for, which is God. You can see God sometimes like a real person. You, like, let's say I see you, but I know that in you it's God. God, it's in you. Why? Because God is love. Do you love? Right. Well, because you love, then God is in you. <laughs> Although their ministry keeps them active, the sisters have time to be just that to each other, sisters. The sisters spend three years at their novitiate center in Oxnard, where they study the nature and mission of the religious life, the sacraments, church doctrine, and history of the congregation. They also learn that their life and mission with the sick and dying are intimately united to and carried out within the church's own mission of bringing the good news of Jesus Christ to all the world. Above all, this time is one of learning about and living a deep, authentic spiritual life and discerning their vocation in God's presence. What would you like to eat today, Cecile? Less than a half hour away from the Formation Center in Oxnard, the Sisters, Servants of Mary, run a convalescent home for women. It is a nice feeling you really loved what you are doing because you see that you made a difference. You see these people that are so sad and you go and talk to them and you made their day. They become so happy. You hug them and kiss them and it's like, oh, there is somebody that cares about, about me. The mission of the servants of Mary demands that they encounter death every day. They spend the last weeks, days, and hours with those on the verge of dying. Their approach to caring for the sick is unique and yet much deeper than just attending to the physical and psychological needs of their patients. Suffering and death in their eyes is an opportunity to draw closer to God and abandon oneself to Him. Knowing that He has gone before us in this, and so wherever He has gone, we are just going after Him. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to be afraid of. Although, I think as humans, we will experience fear. We will experience um, sorrow. But it will be a sorrow and a fear that will not be ultimate, will not overcome ourselves. For the many experiences that I, ha I, I have had, I see that really, for me, I shouldn't take that, that moment as a sad moment. I should take that moment as a gift from God. Because for me, I try to share with the patient at that very last hour. 
that's the the only time that the patient has on earth and if you don't accept it that's it and you miss it that's it the sisters often remind their patients of their dignity and vocation to be like christ even in their most painful and darkest hour happy are those who are called to his supper Lord, I am not worthy to receive. And like Mary at the foot of the cross of her dying son, Jesus, the servants of Mary try to alleviate their patient's pain and anguish and unite their hearts to the suffering of Christ. Mary is always with us. Like every time we're, we're walking down the hall or wherever we're walking, there's Mary. You know, if, there, if we're taking care of a patient, but truly is Mary taking care of her son, Jesus. I like a lot the, the image of Christ in the crucifix. You know, I think this is the, the Christ in our patients. Because many times, I mean, they are just crying and screaming, you know. And you have to see that Christ suffered more than, than, than them for you, you know. And so I think this is the uh, in a way to say, I'm here for you. Hello, it's Sister here. While most Hello. of their ministry takes place during the dark hours of the night, the sisters bring the face of Christ's mercy to homebound patients during the day as well. Check your blood pressure here. Every morning, a sister makes home visits to those who are limited by severe disabilities or illness. These patients cannot afford a visiting nurse, but still require frequent nursing attention, as well as spiritual support and love. The sisters see to it that the sick receive the care and attention they need. They also care for their elderly sisters on the premises of their Kansas City house. Here, they are not only cared for physically, 138 over 78 but can also continue to live out and express their consecrated lives with their other sisters in Christ. For Lorena Goodlow, keeping her ailing husband at home near the family was a priority. Kenneth was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease in 1998. After years as the pastor of several Baptist churches, Kenneth was left almost totally incapacitated when the disease attacked his muscles. I'm not Catholic, my family's not Catholic, you know. Here are these uh, ladies that come in and they take baby-like tender care of him, you know. Wipe his face gently, help him to the bathroom. Um, the other day he just wanted his hair brushed, brush his hair, uh, scratch his eyebrow. You know, simple things that you just, we take so for granted. Caring for patients through the nights can be especially challenging. But for the sisters, it is extremely satisfying and fulfilling. The nighttime duty offers the time for contemplation and prayer. The sisters stay up through the night, satisfying every request from late night feedings or repositioning their patients to exercising their joints and muscles and even praying with them throughout the night. It's like having an angel on guard in your own house, um, caring for someone that really, really needs that kind of care, but in a way, caring for me too, because it lets me lets my mind shut down and lets me go to sleep. You, it, although I'm not going to sleep more than two hours at a time anyway, but it still lets me go sound sleep. I think the, the important thing is how they feel. How they feel about their sickness, about their family, and, and how they are um, acting with us, you know. Because sometimes they are really depressed, you know. You, you, you have to help them to go out to that. Um, sometimes just expressing what they feel, it helps a lot. Lorena is busy maintaining Kenneth's ministry, but
but thanks to the assistance from the servants of Mary, she is also able to spend time with her husband. She knows that is truly a gift from God. We have time to talk and um, just shoot the breeze, you know, just, just it, usually you, you uh, I call it sound, sound bite talking, you know, we just, we had sound bite talking, you had to talk and, because he's going this direction, I'm going in that direction. And, but uh, now we have time to really sit and talk. Um, and believe it or not, it's just the sweetest thing in the world. Gonzalo Santian has been married to his wife Connie for 47 years. Her arthritis, coupled with two strokes and diabetes, has left her bedridden. Connie's daughters and granddaughters try to help care for her, but it was difficult because they have jobs and families of their own. Está buena? <laughs> to me, they're angels on account of what they do for, for humanity, okay? Because not a lot of people will come and do it on their own. I'm getting something from God with interest, and I've already been repaid and repaid over and over again. I'm having my wife at home and having them here. Having the sisters come to their home is a blessing for the colors also. Mark's parents see an improvement in his moods when the sisters visit. I've noticed quite a difference in him. She, she seems to have a very calming effect on him, I think. He's, it, it, it's amazing, it really is. The colors are no strangers to the anguish muscular dystrophy brings. 25 years ago, they lost their first son to the same disabling disease. They've come dangerously close to losing Mark as well. When they come and tell you your son is dying, <laughs> that's not easy to hear. But then that's when we said, it will, something good will come. And it really has. Uh, Mark is just such a positive person himself and has such faith that, but he wants to live. <laughs> but it's, it's not easy to hear that. I think we've heard that three times, but what, twice, that we should come and tell him goodbye, that that was it, you know. He woke up and said, uh, what happened? He just, he still had music to write, I think. As his condition and the possibility for improvement weakens, Mark Culler has two reasons to keep on living, his family and his love of music. Although barely able to move, he writes his music from his bed on a computer with the help of a mouse and these days, Sister Rosanna. With slight moves of his fingers, he slowly and painstakingly clicks his way to melodies and chords. Just because his body is immobile doesn't mean his will is. He just has such a strong will and it makes you think how precious life really is. And he knows that. I wish more people <laughs> knew that and would live it that way. So together, Mark and Sister Rosanna compose a piece for the sisters, servants of Mary. Sister Rosanna works on the lyrics. How are we going to play that? And Mark will write the music. If you watch these notes, they're so difficult to play on the organ. Sister Rosanna is, she's so precious. I can't believe it. She's just a wonderful person. She's lots of fun. And I, I think it's refreshing for Mark to see someone like that instead of always looking at mom and dad. <laughs> it's nice to have her around. She's really precious.
The story of Mother Soledad and her crusade for Christ and the sick is not a story of more than a century and a half ago. It's a story of how a group of religious women continue to receive the same precious gift of grace as Mother Soledad and continue to carry out Christ's own healing ministry to the sick and suffering of the world. They realize that when a cure cannot ease a malady, they administer love. When illness devours the body, they nurse the spirit. They perform their service in its purest form without asking for anything in return. Anchored in Christ's love for them, Mary's intercession and guidance, and devotion to Mother Soledad, these messengers of mercy serve as witnesses of Christ's compassion, mercy, and love for the sick. The sisters are pillars for those crumbling under the weight of illness, loneliness, and despair. I would say that I'm really happy and, and really in love with my community. I'm really happy what I'm doing and I hope the Lord will continue blessing me to be able to continue doing good. Yeah.